Caddis Maximus here, this time with a uh, Craftsman 315 10 300 3/8 inch, I guess, quote unquote, carpenter's drill. Even Sears Best. Probably made in the 1970s. I will give them credit. Uh, well, it's a Bakelite housing, which can easily chip, as we can see here, but. Um, it is pretty thick, and to tell you the truth, this thing is pretty solid. It's not very strong. 3 amp, 1200 RPM drill. It does advertise all ball and needle, or they call ball and roller bearings. Old American made one. Midship grip. They're advertising electronic, but they're kind of... They're using the word electronic because it's a variable speed drill. But it's a bit of a misnomer because real power tools that are electronic are actually load sensing or load compensating. And so even though there's technically a circuit to allow the variable speed, um, it's kind of a rough, view ter I, I guess, catchphrase term back, you know, 40, 50 years ago. Not a particularly great motor, kind of a lower speed motor. When it comes to the power tools that were sold under Sears Craftsman name, uh, a lot of hand tools are just made by other manufacturers. This is, of course, made by other manufacturer, another manufacturer. But they're all uh, the power tools, except for maybe the black skill saws that were sold under the Craftsman name. But most of the other power tools were completely unique designs for Sears. So who knows who made this? There's just any number over the decades. There's tons of people made different power tools. This one's obviously in pretty, pretty decent condition. Caught my eye. Pretty big threads for a 3 amp 1200 RPM drill. Pretty unlikely. I mean, you just don't need to side handle it with something like this at all. And compared to the competition, I've talked about carpenter's drills before, like, you know, DeWalt's and Porter cables, all are just far superior, more compact, much more, much more powerful. But, you know, for a Sears Craftsman drill, I mean, I suppose this one's okay. It's just bulky and surprisingly heavy. It does have a trigger lock, but with a nice guard on it, so you're not accidentally hitting that. Just a huge amount of ventilation on this tool. Not really worried about overheating. Metal gearbox, four screws holding it in. But what also kind of caught my eye about this drill is I've been, I've talked a couple times, Milwaukee and Porter Cable had quarter drills with impacting type keyless chucks, which are, Still available in 3 8 form. They're known as impact driver chucks. Even Home Depot has them. But they're the more modern ones are much heavier duty. This, I couldn't really figure out was, what was going on with this keyless chuck here. This is actually an old school impacting. Not particularly high grip force. It works, but I was having doing some tests and some of the bits did want to come loose. You really have to go at it, but still what caught my eye. It's a very early version of the impacting keyless chuck. And being impacting, I'm surprised that this is a plastic collar because um, I'm pretty sure this, this thing will end up breaking either via just use or of course being dropped. But still thought that was interesting that it was indeed an impacting keyless chuck. <clears throat> Little hole to periodically add oil. Two flats, which I assume that's how they actually screw the chuck onto the spindle. And the chuck, given the size of the drill, the chuck's actually a little bit stubby. I mean, it is all ball and needle bearing with a metal gear case, so the spindle is nice and tight. So I'm sure it was a uh, pretty decent drill. Real common trigger switch that was used in tools in the 70s and 80s, so that actually can be replaced. You can always find used ones. Besides that, let me unplug it here. Power cord is really short, only like four feet, but uh, we can see those lines. Those are indicating this is like a vacuum cleaner style cord, and it is actually just a super flexible cord and I'll give them credit for that this is a being like a vacuum cleaner type cord this thing is just about as flexible as it gets really short strain relief 
Anyway, I figure we take a look inside. Interestingly enough, the screws are all recessed in here. Screws have pretty coarse threads. A decent amount of grab, but what's surprising is the threads are really spread apart. Part of the brittleness of Bakelite, you have to use special design screws. So special that we have this little cutout that's... You might notice that from like self-tapping sheet metal screws, but in Bakelite, once again, it's so brittle that the screws actually have to kind of cut and carve out their own path in order for them to not be too tight and cause any issues. Now I gotta attempt to pull this apart. And here we are. We indeed do have a ball bearing there. Or actually, I think that may be a needle bearing. Here we go. It's a little shim washer. Come on. So it does have ball and roller bearings. It's just not 100%. I could tell by, we'll look at the motor in a second. We can obviously see that there's a needle bearing there for the back of the spindle, but that's actually just a sleeve bearing. Helical cut gear on the front part of the motor so the first stage is helical cut and then the second stage is straight so uh, that's still pretty decent and it looks like a sleeve bearing so this idler gear is actually on sleeve bearings not on needle bearings so slightly misleading advertising because they say ball and roller bearings but just not all ball and roller bearings Let's get this, these two case halves apart here. Pulling it apart, here's our Bakelite housing. I actually have like a little rubber grommet here to help hold the field, keep it from rattling around. It's a feature that many modern drills can take advantage of. Part of the weight is because this is Bakelite, they just have to throw a ton of material at it. Other than that, internally, we have a tech core electronics <laughs> variable speed switch, variable speed reversible. Can't see the ball bearings on both sides of the motor. So it has ball needle bearings on the primary uh, chuck spindle and on the motor, but sleeve bearings on the idler gear, which I suppose is okay. Interestingly enough, this uses a squared off field. Usually those fields are slightly rounded so it's interesting that it's squared off we can see these broad contact points so this is going to be a lower uh, output motor even though it's three amps when you have wide contact bars there's just less windings on the armature so it doesn't spin as fast and doesn't maintain as uh, high magnetic field uh, in a given instance compared to so it's just a cheaper motor with those broader contacts we can see that they're folded, not welded. A little bit of glue to help hold them in there. Brass brush guides. Odd little defect here. We have this one wire which is kind of floating out here in space, which is kind of interesting. Push that back in. And interestingly enough, they have another set of holes for like a cord pinch, but they just decide to never use that. Got it back together here. So Sears and Craftsman have actually had much better drills than this over the years. Certainly ones that truly are all ball and needle bearing. But this one's still kind of an interesting part of history, particularly because of the kind of unique uh, old school impacting keyless chuck. And so usually when I review cheesy drills like this, I just end up recycling them or redonating them. But in this case, I think I'll keep this one just because of uh, that chuck. Just because it's kind of unique. And so when I talk about various keyless chucks, I'll be able to have this as one of the examples. Anyway, thanks for watching.